Hey guys, um, we are inching closer to October. Uh, the fans are not running in here, and I think this week's going to be really, really cool. So um, hopefully by the time you get back uh, and you're wearing face masks underneath all the fencing gear that you're wearing, it's not going to be as hot. Uh, for those that have been here during the summer, um, you can you can fence and, and uh, take lessons with face masks, but uh, this get pretty hot. Um, so we know that October 6th will be when class starts again. Uh, I sent out the calendar or the schedules. The schedule is going to be the same for the most part. Um, unless I see that, hey, there's going to be a lot more people in this class, I might move some things around. But whatever class you were in, if you were here prior to the, the pandemic, uh, it's the same class that we're going to be in. All right. Uh, if you came here during the summer, then I will put you in one of the classes, and hopefully uh, you, you, that will fit into your schedule. Um, other quick announcements. Uh, uh, ben is gone by now, which is why I'm fixing things. Um, also, uh, these are on top of the refrigerator, so feel free to grab one. They're free. Uh, it's a button. This is All-American Fancy Academy. Uh, they're relatively cheap to make, so uh, I went ahead and made some. Um, if you can, um, try to get equipment for yourself. That'll help in things that, uh, uh, less things you have to touch here. Um, there's hand sanitizer all over the place. Uh, if you do borrow our own equipment, remember, um, especially for the ones that have not been here during the summer, uh, the equipment does not go back to, to where you got it from. They go into a box so we can sanitize them and clean them before they, they go back. Um, other quick announcements. Last week of September, uh, we will not have class. So that, that week is like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is September, Thursday, Friday is October. Um, I need a break. <laughs> uh, although we haven't been in class, I've been very, very busy. Between the videos, um, doing special programs over the summer, creating a, a video series for, for parents to be able to teach uh, kids fencing, um, and also, uh, last couple months or month and a half, doing private lessons uh, has been very busy for me. So, last week of September, uh, there will be no fencing. Uh, but other than that, um, I, think, uh, I think that's all the updates. We're, we're also going to miss some fencers. Uh, we lost some fencers over the summer. Um, some of them are just moving. Um, some of them, uh, hopefully they'll be back. I'm not sure yet. Um, but uh, it'll be... Nice to see everyone back. I look forward to, to seeing you guys again. Um, it's still kind of warm, so remember, dress, dress coolly. Uh, when you get back here, as best as you can, um, observe social distancing. I know it might be a little bit difficult seeing your friends, even the teenagers, I have to constantly remind them, even though you have your mask, let's observe some social distancing. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, again, if you have any questions about the schedules and upcoming in October, uh, please let me know. Don't forget, make sure you have your USA fencing membership. Um, if you have questions about buying equipment, let me know. And uh, let's transition to our, um, our Sonic brand and our theme music. The All-American Fencing Academy is grateful to our sponsors who are helping us bring you our on-strip, at-home video training classes. Fox Bookkeeping, helping small business owners and entrepreneurs to run their businesses with confidence by helping them know what the score is. Steve C. McCray, PA, Burlington Family Law, Divorce, and Personal Injury Attorney. Matthew Woods, VO, Professional VoiceOver Services. Hey guys, uh, so warm up today, pretty easy. First one, I, I actually remember to hold on to the timer before I started this time. Uh, let's, go, let's do some jumping jacks, all right? Uh, midway through my jumping jacks, I might transition to other jumping jacks, so pay attention. But we're gonna go a minute for jumping jacks, so let's start off regular jumping jacks, go. So one minute, easy, all the way out, arms all the way up. We know how jumping jacks work. 
All right, we're not counting. We're just going to go for a minute. Now we're going to transition to different jumping jacks. This might be a little bit difficult for you. We are going to move our arms not all the way up and all the way down. They're going to go halfway up, halfway down, while our feet are still doing the same thing. Like this. All right? Very good. So halfway down, halfway up. Okay? Good. We're going to go back to regular jumping jacks. Good. Now, next one. Arms going to go all the way up. Are going to go in front. They're going to go out and down. So up, out, out, down. Up, front, out, down. See if we can catch up with that one. Good. Regular jumping jacks. Good. Let's see how much time we got left. Good. Stop right there. So, let's let you know, instead of adding or going to a minute and counting down from there, I somehow added another minute and didn't count down. So, you get a break on that one. If it hasn't been a minute, then it's a minute. Next one. Maybe an area of about three meters or two and a half meters. Uh, maybe the, the width of your room, about. We're just going to go side to side. We're, gonna go, we're not going to go too long, just side to side. Ready? Go. So, just back and forth. Getting back to used to side to side movements. Good. Just back and forth. Good. We're going to make a transition here. We're going to go inside, outside. So what I mean by that, here we go. In front, behind, in front, behind. Now the left foot. In front, behind, in front, behind. Right foot. Good. Left foot. Remember, the foot is always going in front, behind, in front, behind. Then left foot in front, behind, front, behind. Let's go side to side. Good, about 10 more seconds. Remember, we're not crossing our feet. We're just going side to side. We're not turning this way, galloping to side to side. Good. All right. I saved the best one for last. You're going to hate me. You don't need a seat this high. A small block will do. Maybe a foot off the ground will be OK. Uh, I couldn't find a small block to use, so I'm using a seat. All right. We're going to go one minute, half a minute with one foot, half a minute with the other foot. So for half a minute, we're going to take a step. We're going to go all the way up and bring our arms up. One. All right. Actually, made it easier for you. We're going to go for a full minute. Full minute, but we're going to alternate our legs. Okay, so instead of going for a full minute with only one leg, or full or half minute with only one leg, we're going to full minute, but we're going to alternate legs. Here's your arms, go up. Now make sure I actually start the timer this time. All right, ready, go. So my right leg, my left leg, my right leg, and left leg. Keep it going. Let's find the rhythm. Yes, this is going to hurt. It's going to suck. It's like going up a couple flights of stairs. Use your arms. Swing it up. Let your arms do some of the work. About halfway there. Good. Nice and easy. Find your breath. Try not to go. Find your breath. I need to find a rhythm with my arms. Good. Woo! I think we've done more warm-ups here than we do normally in class. Has a minute up yet? Almost there. Enough time for one more. There we go. That wasn't so bad. All right. Just like always, get some water, get some rest, stretch, and this time I'll say it correctly, we will see you in footwork.
sets of 10 that I normally do or sets of three that I normally do. This time, when we've done it before, we're gonna do a bit of a review for our four. The first one, pretty easy. We did it in the last class, we're gonna do it again. I want you to make sure that you're doing it correctly. When you come back, I'll know if you've been working on it. We're gonna take small steps, okay? Now, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a great, and I'm, forgive me if I pick on you. Um, now, oh, what is her name? Oh, I can't remember her name anymore. I'll remember it later on. But she has been keeping up with her classes. Uh, she recently came back, started doing private lessons with me again um, before uh, we left for COVID. Um, she is doing great. She has been following our classes. Uh, and so I've seen a marked improvement in everything that she's been doing. So congratulations to her. She's been doing her homework. And hopefully you've been, you've been doing it too. All right. So first one, I'm just going to go forward to, to the on guard line. So about four meters for you. Small steps. The biggest mistake here is when you let that back foot come forward, then you are forced to take a bigger step. And the more that, that foot comes close to your feet, the bigger steps are gonna be. Small steps, both feet, all the way. All right? So it's just little by little. Count your steps if you want to, about four meters. That's gonna be, for me, about 20 to 30 steps. All right? From there, easy retreating back. So the retreats you'll notice are bigger. Let's go small steps again. Keep your shoulders steady, you have a lot of movement. Good, relax shoulders, open arms. Good, retreating back, reaching back for your retreats. Good, all right. So the next set, or next couple sets will be reviews, all right? So let's say on the first one, let's do an advance. Remember what that's called? I'll wait for it. Yes, you're right. That's an appell advance. You guys don't remember what appell is? Or if you're new to the class and you're watching a video, an appell is tapping your toe. Tapping your toe. All right? So appell, just tap the toe. Appell advance, tap and go. Remember, we're tapping with our front foot. Just lifting the front foot up, tap. It's like you see a cockroach, you go, tap, ah, get it. All right, so if I just say appell, don't go anywhere. If I say appell advance, tap, advance. Last thing we're gonna cover in this one is crossover forward. All right, so it's one of our few pieces of footwork where the back foot moves forward first, not the front foot. So don't do this, don't take a step and then cross over. This will be back to first, and back to one guard, all right? So, on this set, let's do advance, appell, appell, advance, cross over. Advance, appell, appell, advance, cross over. All right, let's go backwards. This time we'll just do retreat, Check, cross over back. Check's another one that we need to recover or remember. Check, if I do it slow motion, it's a half advance and a retreat, all right? Not a full advance, it's a half advance retreat, okay? It looks like this is full speed, all right? I move my foot forward and then I retreat. I don't use a body, and I don't go like this, retreat. Crossover back, same thing, or opposite of the same thing from the crossover forward. Front foot moves first, take a healthy step back. A lot of people, they cross over, it's like they barely want to cross over. They barely want to cross over. Cross that mess over, cross it over. All right, so going back, we do retreat, check, crossover back. Retreat, check, crossover back. Retreat, check, crossover back. Let's go forward again, advance, appell, appell, advance, crossover forward. Advance, appell, appell, advance, crossover forward. Going back, retreat, check, crossover back. Retreat, check, crossover back. Okay, let's do one more. That's really fun. That was pretty easy. I'll do it a little bit faster. Advance, tap, or appell, 
Compel, advance, cross over forward, advance, you're not big. Compel, compel, advance, also not big, cross over forward. I can be a little bit bigger. Retreat, that's big. Check, out, uh, cross over back, all right? Retreat, the check, you can use a little bit of arm. Check, cross over back. Okay, pretty easy, right? All right, so those are reviews. Um, I have some review footwork uh, on, uh, on on YouTube someplace that, that goes through every piece of footwork, so take a look at that when you get a chance. I'll, I'll put a link to it. All right, so going forward, some other reviews. Let's do jump, advance, jump, lunge, recover, palestra. It's a lot, isn't it? All right. I'll make it simple. Let's do advance, jump, lunge, advance, palestra. Now I'm not going far on this, so you don't have to go far. So, let's review. Advance, it's the same thing. Jump, the front foot goes first. This should leave the ground, that foot should still be on the ground, like that. So jump, that's what you're doing slowly. Front foot, back foot, okay? Now, the second part of that was lunge. Two pieces of footwork. Jump, lunge. Second one was balestra. We put both of those together. So those of you that were in class prior to this, you know what a balestra is. A balestra is a jump. You go straight into your lunge. That foot, that front foot hits the ground, pops back up straight to your lunge. All right? And you'll notice for all of those, I'm extending before I go. So advance, jump forward, lunge, recover, advance, ballista. All right, ready? Advance, jump forward, lunge. Advance, ballista. Advance, jump forward, lunge. Advance, ballista. All right, let's do that again. Ready? Advance, jump forward, lunge. Advance, pull up. Advance, jump forward, lunge. Advance, pull up. Not bad. You're doing well. I can see you. Let's do one more. Ready? Advance. Lunge, emphasize those extensions, advance, pull up, advance, jump forward, lunge, advance, pull up. All right. One more piece of footwork. Ready? Advance, lunge, on guard. What's that called? Patananda. Very good. Advance, lunge, two separate actions. One action, advance, lunge. Uh, all together, patanana. All right? Try to get the sound effects. Advance, lunge, thump of the heel. The patanana sounds like this. But a boom. Hear that? But a boom. But a boom. Advance, lunge, hear the thump of the heel. Patanana. Let's do it one more time, and then I'll let you rest. Ready? Advance, lunge, patanana. Advance, lunge, patanana. Advance, lunge, patanana. Advance, lunge, patanana. All right. Pretty easy footwork today. I'll probably do a different kind of review next week. That way, you just get used to coming back to class and remembering all the footwork that we do. So get your break, get some water, get some rest, and we will see you in Blade Work.
Justin uh, by now. If he walks up, then, then I'm going to have to cut this off. But um, we're going to continue on the theme of simplicity today. All right? Uh, I think we might have covered a little bit of this last week, but we're going to go to extension. But what I wanted to do, focus on here is the recovery. So the, the recovery is not a pull back. So if you watch the blade, the blade is going straight back, then it's coming up. That's not what I want you to do. What I want you to do for this one is I want you to immediately bring the point up. Bring the point up. I want you to avoid this. Especially when someone's attacking you and you have to parry, it's not there. You've got to bring that up. So have it up here so that way you've got something to parry with. Alright? So let's do 10 extensions. Pretty easy. But remember, we're recovering back to this position, not to here. There's a difference. So there's a letter B in our R, not the letter L. All right, ready? That's one, two, relax your shoulders, three, back hand up two, four, five, six, Seven, keeping your eye on target. Try to get the same spot every time. Eight. Remember, we're not we're not aiming like this to try to get the same spot. Just push forward. Nine and ten. Okay. Now, same emphasis there, but we're going to do it with an advance, an extension advance. I really want you to emphasize the extension before the advance. Don't get into, you see that? So I'll do that in slow motion. Both the foot and the hand is going at the same time. I want you to really emphasize. So let's do the first five, two separate actions. Then the last five, we'll do one action. But the one action still looks like this. Extend, advance. Extend, advance. So my foot starts moving when I'm almost to the terminal point of my extension, then I go forward. The hope is, when you're attacking, you move that arm really quick, you're within an inch of hitting before you actually move your foot, or at least with an advance, okay? So, two separate actions. Remember, don't take big steps. You're gonna have to judge your own steps here. So there's my extension, I'm gonna retreat. Extend one, don't move yet. Advance enough to hit. Recover and retreat at the same time. One, two, three. All right, so the first one. One, two, three. Retreat and recover at the same time. And don't bring it down. Be mindful of what you're doing. Four. Extend. Advance. Five. Extend. Advance. Six. Always be mindful for each one you do. You should know when you do something wrong. Out eight, I think. Nine. Ten. All right? Now, we kept it separate actions, all, all 10. So I said we're gonna do it all in one motion for, for at least five of them. So let's do five, since I'm going to make a mistake. This one is not one, two separate. One, go. One, go. So there is no break in your action, so it won't be one, break, go. It's also, be mindful of what you're doing. Are you moving at the same time? I can't see you, all right? So you have to be able to go one, then go. Like someone's pulling you out, and then you extend. Let's do five. One, recover, and retreat. Two, recover, retreat. Three, recover, retreat. Four, recover, retreat. Five, recover, retreat, all right? Last one's pretty easy as well. We do the same thing for lunch. Okay? Let's do 10. Two separate actions. One, 
Hands slightly above the shoulder, shoulders relaxed. Back hand is up and out. We lunge. Back hand stays where it is. Arm goes up, so you see my hand in relation to my shoulder? That's one. Recover, retreat at the same time. Two, make sure you're landing on your heels. Recover, retreat at the same time. Point is back up, not all the way up, but eye level. Three, kind of went that one fast, did that one fast. Four, five, recover, retreat at the same time. Six, extension first, then go. You don't have to go fast. Eight. Nine, and ten. All right? So we're going to do five more. And I didn't mention, but notice my back foot never moved. I'm not going far with those lunges. So I'll try to work on making sure that you're not sliding forward for those lunges. It's not an advance. It's a lunge. All right. So we're going to do five all together. Before we get to a stopping point, we're almost there. That's when we lunge. Kick that foot out. Don't land on your toe. One. Two. You should hear that bump. Three. It's like you're showing someone the under part of your foot. Four. And five. All right. So pretty easy blade work today. Get some water. Get some rest. We'll see you in skill work. All right, for skill work today. Skill work today, I'm going to call a lack of social distancing. All right? It happens, you fence, you get too close to somebody. We're going to be doing our best not to get close to anybody. So a lot of the skills and drills that we're going to do, when we return to class, we're going to try to avoid close contact drills. But for fun, we're going to do some close contact drills. All right, so these are the times, and you found everyone uh, has done it before, they've gotten too close to you, all right? You can't do your traditional extension. You can't lunge to hit them. You have to try to hit them somehow, especially if they're right on top of you, they're not going away. You have to try to hit them, all right? Otherwise, they're gonna try to hit you. So, with your target, yeah, let's say, we'll stand a foot in front of the target. So my foot is about a foot in front of the target, all right? So here, your point is well beyond the target that's in front of you, all right? So you can use whatever you want for target. For this one, the easiest one that I find to do is just to take the shoulder, take your arm, move it back, and go forward, all right? I can, I've got a little bit of flexibility to bring my point back, keep it in front of me, and still hit, or you can take this, swing it all the way back. You see my point's all the way back there, but you have to bring your point in before you go. If you try to swing it in this way, you're not gonna hit. All right? We're gonna do five. I'll try different methods, but my favorite is there. Just putting it on target. There's gonna be a little bit of rotation of the shoulder. Now, we're not going to turn and do this. Turning of the shoulder will get us probably a yellow card. All right? If anything, a halt. So, we can turn a little bit, get us an angle, and hit. You can lean back. If you do, sometimes I, I'll lean back. I'll even allow a step back, all right? To give me a little bit more space. Make it harder for me, I'm not gonna take a step back. So one, I go all the way back. Two, three, I'll lean back. Four, five, six, seven, all the way back. Eight, I'm a little off target. 9 and 10. Some other ways you can do uh, with something in front of you, you can preen if you like. All right? Some of you know how to do this. If you do, great. You can try it. You're just doing a big circle, big circle, big circle in. So it's not big circle, big circle, cut through. Big circle, big circle in. It helps also if you take a step back. All right? So this time we are going to go to the right side of the target. About a foot in front of the target, but still pretty close to us. So let's say they're trying to run past us. 
All right, I don't know why I'm looking over there. The camera's not over there. But let's say we're trying, they're trying to run past us on our right side. They're trying to get by. We reach back and try to hit them as they're going by. So this is kind of the same one. We're reaching back and hit. We're reaching back and hit. There's a little bit of rotation, that's fine. Hit. Especially if they're trying to run past you, a lot of times I'll take a step back, give myself a little more space. All right, so let's do 10. One, two, three. I'll try some step backs. Four. Greens are hard here. Five. They're on the wrong side for green. Six. So before I've been going up. Seven. You can also go down. Eight. Nine. Ten. All right? No pretty way of doing this sometimes. Sometimes just putting your, your point on target. Now we're going to go to the right side. I think I might have said right side last time. But now I'm on the right side. Before I was on the left side of the target. All right? Now, we can try taking a step back. It's going to be hard if I just rotate, especially if they're running past me on the left side. You can do that. All right? Especially if they're going pretty fast. You might have a small window of opportunity to hit them. All right? But we're just going to... Lean back, give yourself a little bit of space. All right, let's do a couple of those. Two, three, four, five. All right, now six step back. Six, give ourselves a little more space. Seven, oh, I hit them on the way in. Eight, now I like creams usually for this one. Nine. And I'll go for a few more. A little bit of step back, give myself a little more space. All right. This is a half circle in. Don't go halfway and then try to cut through. Half circle in. All right. You want to be creative? You can try to go around the back a little harder. There we go. Got that on target. All right. So let's do a few more. This one's going to be very, very, very good. All right. Let's say they have run past us. They are now behind us. If you manage to get that parry, how many reposts do you have? You have one chance for a repost. So they've attacked you. You parry. They're running by. All right? You can turn around and hit them if they're running by. You've got one chance. Turn around and hit them. All right? Pretty easy. All we're doing is turning around and hit them. If you get that parry late, all right, they're running by, they're running really fast. Turn around and hit. Let's go a little further. Turn around and hit. This is when they're going past you, all right? You can parry. If you don't immediately repost, you have one chance to repost as they go by, all right? So what we'll do for this one, because I've turned away from you, I'll start off close, simply make my way past, go further, and I'll be turning around to hit, all right? One. Oh, I missed that one. Sorry. One, two. What am I setting up? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. This is a piece of a zipper I was setting up. Go that way. I probably could have put it in my pocket. <laughs> All right. Sometimes you've also seen me do this as people run by. I've also tried to throw the tip. Now, a little bit harder hit the land, but that's what I tend to do sometimes. As they're going by, I throw it right on the back. All right. Now they try to stop, or they try to run by you on this side too. All right. So it's a little bit harder. I've done this before. Just completely go around my back. I've also gotten yellow carded for it. I don't think I should be yellow carded for it. So let's not do that one. Let's just, this one, I'll probably turn around and hit. All right? So let's do 10. We're going to go a little bit further and further and further. One. Two. Three. Four, five, usually about then, I'll throw it six, 
Getting past this a little bit further. Seven. Eight. I'll stay where I am. Nine. Remember, they're running past you. There's no other reason why you'd be standing behind them. Like Ten. Okay? All right. So, that's your skill work today. Pretty easy, a little bit different. Hope you had fun with it. Uh, if, if you saw, I can't remember if the angle can see you, but if you saw uh, Nate coming in, he's a private lesson for today. Uh, so I will see you in cool down. All right, so quick cool down. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. I've got the fan on right next to you. But it is quite cool in the best room. Uh, I am here on the second day. Welcome to cool down. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I've got the fan on right next to me. Uh, it is pretty cool in here, but I still like turning the fans on. Pulls it off even more. Uh, you need two gloves, two rolled up socks. I'm using tennis balls. Tennis balls can be a little bit difficult because if you miss it, it may go wrong. Alright, so let's start off with some pretty hard stuff. Um, We've done this before, hold it straight up, you can let it go up a little bit, this will help, alright, instead of just dropping it, but when you let it go, you're going to switch over your hands and catch them on the other side, so make sure when you let it go, they go straight up, that way they go straight down, and when you catch it, they're still in the same spot that you left. So let's try it again, there you go. This one's a little bit easier, at least for me, oh, missed that one. A little bit easier for me. I miss that one again. Try it again. There we go. All right. Toss it up a little bit. Go straight up. And hatch as you cross your hands. Ah. Put the tennis balls roll around. But you have to cross your hands. And I keep missing that other one. There we go. Now, the harder part, or at least the harder one for me, is Tossing them up, switching my hands, and catching them. All right, let's see if I can do it on the first try. Got you in there, ready? There we go. No, don't toss them too high. But also the hard part is make sure you don't toss them like that, where they start to crisscross. Okay, so toss straight up, and catch. All right, that was easy, that didn't take a little. Next one, again, two balls. What I want you to do is toss one, toss the other. All right, simple stuff, just be with the catch of the hand. Try to keep it one place, so that's what, that way it's not going all over the place and you toss it like that. Straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. All right, now, what I want you to do is I want you to, in the highest point of that toss, I want you to start this toss. So only two tosses, high point toss, all right? So that time, my balls kind of went, my tennis balls kind of went uh, all over the place. You want ideally to go up, straight up. Ready? Highest, highest, all right? They're not even, let's see if I can make it better. Highest, highest, good. It's a little bit more even, highest, highest. You can see where this is going to, highest, highest, all right? Highest point, highest point, highest point, highest point. All right, so if you practice that, try the other way. Left hand first, highest point, while it's still there, still in midair, <coughs> cross the other one. Highest, highest. Excuse me. Highest, highest. Go back to this one first, highest point, toss. Highest point, toss. Now, you're going to toss three times. One, two, three. One, two, three. So at any one time, there's only one ball in your hand. One, two, three. Ready? Or in both hands. One, two, three. All right, let's go to the next easy one. We're going to toss. At the highest point, the one is still holding the hand, uh, still holding the, um, uh, this, this um, ball. We're going to pass it over to the other hand. All right? And you're going to catch the other one. Looks like that. All right? So we're almost to juggling. So yeah, of course, we can All right? This one's the easy one. All right? So I'll do that a few more times. It might be easier for you to 
pop in one hand and switch to the other. Which one do you do? Alright? Now, a little bit harder. You're going to toss with one hand, but a little bit of an angle because we're going to this hand. Now, at the point that it's highest, just like this, we're going to toss this other ball. So it's going to the other hand. So it looks like this. Alright? Highest point, toss the other one. High point, top the other. High point, top the other. All right? All right? And I might leave it at this. But I will do one more part of this. I'm going to pause the video in a second so I can grab another tennis ball. But what we're doing is highest point, we're going to toss up the other ball, but we're switching hands on the catch. So we're almost juggling. We are juggling. All right? But we're only using both two tennis balls. All right? So I'm going to pause the video. And we're back. Alright. So, toss, 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 toss. Only two, two tennis balls. But I'm holding the third one. So I need you to be able to catch with one ball still in your hand. Alright? Now, we're going to toss. We're going to toss. And then we're going to keep things going with a third ball. Oops. It's been a while since I've done this. Alright? One, two, three. Let's try it for just a second. One, two, three. All right. Now I, I know how to juggle, but it might take a little longer. All right. One, two, three. And you keep going. There we go. All right. Have fun with that. Uh, don't break anything in the house. Um, Rolled up socks will work out well because they don't roll all over, uh, roll all over the place. Uh, but we'll see you in the bout analysis. Okay, uh, a little bit different here. Instead of uh, a a national, or not a national, but a, a world championship or or. Uh, one of those professional bouts. Uh, we did uh, some recordings of these are some of our competitive fencers uh, Sabrina, Gabe. Uh, you're, you'll actually see me fence, and Bruce is, I think, hanging around someplace in Holden's here. So we're going to do some uh, analysis for our own bouts. So this is Gabe and I. Um, you'll notice there's some pushes for me. And I'll see if I can back it up, but I want to show you something that Gabe is doing. And let me see, I can't back up. Let's see if we can back up just using this. All right, a little too much, but that's okay. But what I wanted to point out here, as I'm pushing forward, you'll notice Gabe is constantly looking for my weapon. He's trying to make me stop. He's trying to get me to stop going forward. And he managed, manages to do that. Um, and so we changed direction. So I'm doing something a little bit different. <clears throat> I'm trying to give him an opening. We'll back up a little bit there. There's something that we've covered in a few classes. So you see after my attempted repost, I go back in and that was bait right there. I knew it wasn't my priority. So I missed a repost. I go back in, but with the intention of trying to get him to finish his attack, which he does, but I missed my repost and he also misses his repost. But we've covered that a few times too if you've if you've been taking lessons just setting up an open bait and I can't tell with these lights over here if it's white or colored but that was that was off target we'll cover a few bouts on this one small steps small steps in preparation he let me take over there but he's back on the march again so he's keeping it small, uh, but he doesn't finish it, so I was able to get one. One zero. He gets his parry, repost, no misses, I managed to squeeze one in there. That's just close contact fencing. Sometimes you just gotta hope for the best on that one. I 
I missed my attack. He does a good job of pulling distance, um, but he misses his attack afterwards. Again, there's his hide, hide, hide that you see that we've been working on, and he should finish. He does finish, but it's off target. Or I'm, he misses. My counterattack is off target, and unfortunately, we're not at a good angle here, so we can't see what's happening on that side. So hopefully, we'll push out of there. It's a nice one to attack. It doesn't hit. Um, I can't tell if I hit the parry repost or if I just counterattacked. Let's see if we can get ourselves out of that corner. Now, a lot of times, you'll see me just pushing, waiting for the counterattack. Um, sometimes, and something that we've been working on in class is just being able to finish the attack. And I'm waiting too long for that counterattack. One too many times, and he goes for the flesh uh, with a delayed action, and I miss my parry. So it was a good action. So sometimes, if you can, you can push, 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 and be able to finish that attack. That time I tried to push, but I stop and take the parry, miss the first repost, take it again, and and remise my repost. So I took my parry, took one too many steps in that I should have, also did a couple feints, and I got caught. And Gabe hit something, but it was off target. I'm one that doesn't actively look for the weapon. I tend to just kind of leave the weapon out there and make it deal with it. And do stuff like that. So I'm on the push again. A lot of us are playing with point lines. If you remember some of the classes we've been doing, point lines are pre-existing attacks. We're probably a little too close there. But they're pre-existing attacks, and sometimes I use it just to kind of keep you away from me. And I tried to set up another bait. I took a step towards him, knowing that he had priority, but uh, he managed to catch me. Whoa. And did he catch that parry repost? It wasn't a straight attack. He had enough to lay on it to find me. It was a good touch. You'll notice I'm not rewinding this as much, and his repost is off target. Uh, I'm not rewinding this much because I can't use my controls on my keyboard like I do on YouTube. And I, want, I only want to back it up for like a, a two seconds, but I can't do that well. Uh, Sabrina is refereeing, and um, I think she didn't quite catch the action on that one. Here we go on the push. And I've been fencing Gabe for a while, so a lot of the stuff that uh, we're doing, we know how to deal with each other. And that's something that uh, you didn't see earlier. Uh, but again, we've been working on stuff like this in class. But watch my body language here. Uh, not that one. There. There. Right there. I'm trying to... I'm trying to get him to react. I'm trying to either get him to finish his attack and I'm ready for the parry. But I was expecting just a straight attack. He did a compound attack, so it wasn't just straight. He looked like he did a 1-2. Um, he got a piece of me, but it was off target. And there's that body movement again. Probably leaned over just a little too much. And I got a little lucky there. That's just a straight counterattack. That was all that was was just as he was attacking, I stuck it out really quick and ran like heck. There. <laughs> Yeah, don't mind me. I'm just old and tired. <laughs> Alright. 
I tried after my parry. He stopped my first attack. He went for his. I parried. I think I might have tried to disengage on that one, but I missed and I was off target. It's a common thing for me to take the second parry and immediately go for the disengage. So if you know that about me, use it to your advantage. Um, but I will almost immediately, after a second parry, uh, do, a, do a disengage. And time ran out. That's why I was backing up. And so I am jumping off here. And who's coming up now? So Sabrina and Gabe. So something a little bit different here. So we'll do this bout, we'll do one more. As you can tell, these are competitive fencers. They are all wearing their face masks. Um, so in case you're worried that you can't fence and wear your face mask as well, you can. And Sabrina just dropped her mask. <laughs> all right, so let's see how this bout goes. Sabrina and Gabe are, are very different fencers. Uh, they, they have a lot of different attacks. <clears throat> There's a push from Sabrina first. Hide, 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 hide. Changing tempos, I like that. She's, she's doing a lot of good job changing tempos there. The final attack is off target though. Simultaneous attack, I think. Let's see what Bruce calls it. The attack from the right is off target. Okay, no touch. Hard to tell from this angle sometimes. And Gabe's on a push. Sabrina gives ground. And you can see Sabrina, she's trying to give that point in line just to try to get Gabe to slow down. The attack misses. He did a delay coupe and then finish. Sabrina, this is her change in tempo. It's push, push, and then she's got like that double advance. And I wasn't quite paying attention. The parry repost from Gabe is off target, okay. Good thing Bruce was paying attention. But if you'll notice, Sabrina changes in tempo. She usually has, the first one she did was really good, but then after that, her changes in tempo tends to be the same. And I don't have sound here, but Sabrina has a bad habit sometimes on a push there. Like a lot of times Gabe could probably just finish. Uh, Sabrina will try to attack into you. Sometimes it'll get you moving. That would be Sabrina's. Bruce is thinking about it. Now, I'm right here. This is me tapping my toe. Um, I remember this action because I was off to the side. I thought it was Sabrina's. And he doesn't remember. <laughs> I think he throws this out. Oh, no, that's right. He did look at me. <laughs> he looked at me to ask what I thought. And I think uh, I think I might have said it was Sabrina's. Alright, make a decision, Bruce. <laughs> I'm explaining to him what I saw. This is oh, okay, he goes he goes the same direction. Alright, scores one zero to Sabrina. One of the things that Sabrina does, and I don't have sound here, so I can't hear the blade contact. Um, and there it is again as you as as you push she tries to look for the weapon and goes. Sometimes it works for her. She catches the weapon. She's able to either hit on or off target. Sometimes she misses the weapon, but she continues anyway, which puts her in a bad position. And she gets that counterattack. That was a nice little hide, 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 hide by Gabe, but he misses. But one thing that Sabrina does is um, she'll go backwards. She'll find the weapon, so she'll take control. But she won't push forward again. She'll keep going back. She got a little too close for that one. She tried a big preparation, and Gabe was ready right on top of her. The counterattack in prep, uh, she didn't have time to put that point back on. And there's that little boom, 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 boom. That's common Sabrina changes in tempo. <laughs> she did a better job uh, on her first touch on her changes in tempo. One of Sabrina's favorite touches that she likes to do, and again, if, if you 
get used to fencing her. She does this flesh and she pulls back that weapon. So you're looking for it. Now, if you're not ready for it or if you're not in a good position to take that parry, she'll sneak that in. What she can do a better job is watch where the parry is going to go and either sneak in that point either on the four or six side or wherever, but instead of just always going to the six side. And Gabe is trying to... Nice. So he's doing... He's, he's trying to show different things like, oh, I'm going to go up, I might go down. He's trying to give her false a false sense of where he's going to finish. He did finish, if you don't remember, I'll back it up. He finished, you couldn't see, he's off the screen. Let's see, yeah, here we go. He'll throw the point on this one. So look, 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 I'm going to go up, I'm going to go down, I'm going to go up, I'm going to go down. And it's just a quick thrown point to the shoulder. Um, for people that's not used to having to stop an attack like that, that's that's a pretty hard attack to stop. Uh, so he ties it up at 3-3. Three, three. There's that point line again. Um, and actually, uh, a, lot of, a lot of these guys have been doing a good job of just ignoring that point line. Um, early on, they'll see the point line, they'll try to beat it out of the way and try to attack afterwards which is exactly what they're waiting for um, so a lot of times you'll see Sabrina just kind of hang out there until he puts it down he brings it back up and she did a good job of taking the beat and going but she hit off target hopefully this next bout we'll see Bruce there's a couple things that Bruce does I don't remember the call on that one Bruce says the attack from the right. Okay. Let's see what happens here. I don't remember how this finishes. You know, Sabrina could probably do a better job of trying to keep Gabe from going forward. Tries to catch that preparation again. Gabe is waiting for it. Takes a parry, but the repost is off target. And Gabe does something similar that Sabrina does. It's the flesh, but with a delayed... The arm that's pulled back. And he's hitting almost like while he's right next to Sabrina. There's that push. Can't see. Oh, that should be a repost. But I can't... I don't remember where the off target light came on. Yeah. Repost is fine. Repos is, is on time. And we're at LaBelle 4-4. Four, four. So here is, especially when you're at LaBelle, you want to be either particularly careful, um, plan your attack, you don't want to just go out there and, hey, let's see what happens. Um, you know, the next touch wins. So be, be thoughtful, mindful. Ooh. If I remember that one, I think I said Sabrina delayed just a little too long. Yeah, so Bruce said the same thing. So Sabrina, let's watch that again. So instead of a continuous push forward, you'll Sabrina, you'll see Sabrina come to a stop. She doesn't just finish the attack. You'll be able to see it, here we go. Here's that movement forward. There's that stop. There's that stop. Just enough for Gabe to get some time in there. That's a tough call. You know, my original, just seeing it again, and, and I think when I was sitting there, I saw that she waited just a little too long. She stopped instead of there's a continuous motion forward. Um, some referees might say that's still the attack. You know, she was still moving forward. Um, I thought it was preparation. She had enough stop there uh, to... to give Gabe an opening for an attack on preparation. So, let's see who's next. We'll do one more. I think Bruce is... Uh, I don't want to watch me and Bruce. It's Sabrina and me. Trying to catch another one here. Do we have any with anybody else? Okay, well, I guess we'll watch the Bruce and I. I'm also open to 
find one with Bruce and Sabrina. Um, but I think Bruce tries to do it with me. And I can't remember if he's successful. And some something I would do want you to see that Bruce does do. Alright, here we go. Uh, who's refereeing? Who are we waiting for? Oh, Sabrina's refereeing. Okay. I can't remember if I give Bruce a break on this one. <laughs> a couple of these bouts, I just go straight on out. A straight attack from me there. Um, not quite sure. And Bruce does this a lot. Um, on the first attack, he'll he'll actually miss, and I can get away with just a straight attack. Ah, so if you watch him again. Whereas, I'll just go straight, you'll see him pull his arm back. Just enough time for me to hit target um, and lock out his timing. You see that pullback? He doesn't go straight on through. Uh, another classic Bruce move where he misses and that point will just, <laughs> it'll just keep coming at you. If you're not paying attention, uh, that point is still in front of you. Missed my parry repos. I should have just continued. Nice second intention by Bruce. Scores 1-1. One, one. And I missed the second repost here, so Bruce is up 2-1. Another thing that we've talked about before, notice our feet are always moving. We're never really at rest. Even we're just we're not going anywhere, the feet is always moving. I'm hiding my weapon, I'm keeping it out of Bruce's reach. Okay, I can tell something there. Ah, oh, okay, he didn't do what I thought he was going to do, but the attack's from the right. But, let's see if Bruce does it any time. I've been telling Sabrina because she, she has to deal with it, and Holden has to deal with it too. Um, that's just a bait. Uh, you'll see me, you can do any parry repulse with that one. But, um... You'll see me walk through with just kind of a clear opening for you to hit me, and I'll take it, and my choice of repost. But anyway, going back to what I was talking about, uh, Holden is trying to deal with it, and another thrown point to the back, Sabrina is trying to deal with it. Bruce's esquive, or he, he just kind of twists out of the way. And I've been telling them how you can tell Bruce is going to do it. Usually when Bruce is pushing you, he's going to stay where he is. And I didn't really give Bruce a break there. <laughs> um, but he'll stay where he is. But if he wants to skeeve or just twist out of the way, he'll back up and slow down and he'll come to a stop wherever he wants. But he'll back up and he'll stop. And if you see him do that, he's wanting to skeeve out of the way. Uh, so that was a short one. Um, we'll go ahead and watch Sabrina and I. And so that's why it's helpful to take small, small steps. You know, if they're ready for the skeeve, oh, from this point of view, that looked like Sabrina's, but uh, simultaneous attack. All right. Again, that's that's just another bait. Um, I start off the bout the same way. So if you look at the first touch here. So I start off making it look like the same thing. I'm moving to the center, it looks like I might do a simultaneous attack. I move forward, same rhythm, but instead of finishing, I wait for the attack and take the parry repost. Well, that one was going to the back as well. And you've seen that before. And it's something that I've been working on with some students. You'll see the push, the failed attack, so it's no longer my priority, but you'll see me charge forward again. Failed attack, charge forward with a full intention of taking your attack from you. I want you to finish your attack knowing that it's your priority. There goes Gracie. <laughs> Other things to point out, you know. I don't know if I've pointed out before, but notice we're, we're almost always have our knees bent. We're not 
fencing and standing up. A lot of people, if you watch in class when they're fencing, their, their legs are just completely straight. Nice attack by Sabrina. She likes to go right underneath that, my weapon arm. Um, hard one to stop if you don't know where she's going. She also has does some ones where she looks like she's going to go down and she angles it back up. And so if you're paring down or an eight, um, she'll sneak that point right back up. And that's a repost. Uh, that one she could have done a better job of accelerating. Well, I've been working on that with, it, uh, with Sabrina. Being able to push slowly or not being, not having to go anywhere, but doing an accelerated attack. And maybe with some deceive. Instead of just going straight, especially, uh, she almost caught me on preparation. But instead of just going straight, because I'm ready for that. I'm waiting for that. She also has a tendency of not recovering. She likes that flesh, and so it kind of leaves her in a vulnerable spot once she misses. So if you watch it again, she'll go for the flesh, and she's just kind of stuck in that forward movement. So if you're not in your most stable position and can't recover, and you can't recover, then you're, you're kind of have a small, giving them a small window of opportunity to, to hit you. If you miss, recover out of there. I don't know what happened there. We both didn't hit anything and just kind of gave it up. And I'm doing some silliness because I'm tired. <laughs> I think by now I'm just doing, I'm just trying different parries, different reposts, different attacks. Uh, score is 4-0. Um, I'm, I'm honestly just messing around by now. <laughs> squeezes one in. Not quite sure how she got that one in there. Well, she did a great job. I'm just not quite sure where she got me, but she did. What I'd love for her to do is just do some hidden attacks here uh, because she's doing kind of first intention attacks and I'm able to just stop it with a single parry, just like that. And that one's a little skeevy for me. Um, I'm moving forward, and, and I think I mentioned before, it's a, it's a habit of Sabrina sometimes, is moving forward, she's looking, she's looking, she's looking for the weapon. Sometimes she just goes for the weapon and goes anyway. Um, but in this case, I am just moving forward, moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. She tries to counterattack and I finish. That that was just honestly a lazy attack by me. <laughs> uh, knowing that I can possibly get her to counterattack while I'm going forward. Anyway, so hope you enjoyed that. Um, I I did another video last night or tonight uh, of some bouts um with a with our fisheye lens so you, I, you get more of the strip uh, so even to the the other side of the strip so it's not um, quite at an angle here better better angle of the fencing um, and uh, you will see uh, Bruce and Sabrina um, fencing on on the next uh, video so hope you enjoyed that um, I uh, didn't want to just say, hey, look at me fence, <laughs> um, but uh, I do make it a little tough on these guys uh, because they're, they're just going to see tough fencing on a strip. Uh, there are some things that I do that uh, 
that's they don't use quite often. You see me do a lot of thrown points over the back. Um, that that is a tough move to do. It's also a tough faction to to stop. Um, so trying to get them used to that, uh, especially when um, when they're dealing with fencers that can do that. That was kind of odd. Watch this. Watch this. Watch these two. And down and up. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, we'll be back to classes pretty soon. So look forward to seeing, ev seeing everyone. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. American Fencing Academy is grateful to our sponsors who are helping us bring you our on-strip, at-home video training classes. Fox Bookkeeping, helping small business owners and entrepreneurs to run their businesses with confidence by helping them know what the score is. Steve C. McRae, PA, Burlington Family Law, Divorce, and Personal Injury Attorney. Matthew Woods, VO, Professional Voiceover Services. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.